your life. And I think about my life. And what the focus of my life and my attention and my time and my desires are. How much of that, if I, if I took, uh, uh, in my case, the guys would tell you, if I took a whiteboard <laughs> and I wrote on the whiteboard all the things that I do in pursuing God, this God who has pursued me. That I do to know God. This God who knows me. And he knows every horrible thing about me. And yet he still loves me. To pursue the salvation that this God is granting. Without me having to do anything to be a part of it. Except to, to believe and to receive. To what God says here. Turn from the world. And come to me. There's only one God. Am I focused on him? More than I am focused on this world and what pleasures and things that it offers. You say, well, Pastor, you've you got to be reasonable. I mean, I've got to go to work. Okay. You may work with some, <laughs> some really horrible pagans. I mean, they may cuss and spit and, you know, tell stories about their their wives and their girlfriends and all this kind of stuff and, and you, you may hear this sort of thing constantly. Do you have to participate? You don't have to even condemn them. You don't have to give them a hard time. What is going to keep my focus on God in that kind of situation on my workplace is to know that if I seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, all these other things are going to be added. Then he's going to provide opportunities for me to live out. And some of it's going to happen in tough situations where I could blow my top. I could throw a fit. I could get mad and start using Baptist cuss words like dang and shoot. <laughs> and, and all that sort of thing. And yet what needs to happen is they need to see Jesus. And so the focus then comes not whether or not I'm happy with all these people, but whether or not they see Jesus in me. And so with the marriage, I mean, you can have two people who, who cannot and do not in their personalities get along at all. And they married and then they found out later. And so what happens in that situation? Well, here's the, here's the thing that God would be saying. If you will submit yourself to me and my love and you'll be obedient to me and they will do the same thing, you're going to be able to get along because Jesus can get along with himself. And so if you're like Christ and they're like Christ, you're going to be able to do it. Will there be challenges? Absolutely. Where there be testings and trials, certainly there will be. The only thing that can fracture that situation and keep it fractured is when we find ourselves, whether it's in the workplace, whether it's dealing with finances, whether it's a parent-child relationship, whatever it might be, is going to be when one person in their free will says no to God. Or not to the other person. No to God. You see, we, we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added. You say, well, how can you just read that in, in, the, in the Old Testament and say, well, there's no other God. But didn't in, the, in the Ten Commandments, God said, don't have any other God before me. So that means there are other gods. You just put them down here and put God on top. And that's what the Jewish people thought. <laughs> that's what they thought. Oh, yeah. Yahweh's number one, and then we've got Baal, we kind of like Molech, and that sort of thing. But if I said, don't bring that before me, whatever it is, you know, I'm, I'm picking a new car or something, hey, you know, don't bring that AMC pacer before me. No, oh, I didn't want to see, right? No other gods before me means I don't want you to show up with any other gods. Don't bring them before me. I, I don't want to see your other gods. And yet the people of Israel would come to God and they'd come to the temple and God would say, 
I know when you're coming and you're bringing your sacrifices that your heart really belongs to the Queen of Heaven. And you're going, Queen of Heaven? Yeah. Search that sometime in your Bible. You're going to find that there was actually a period of time where people were so determined to make a, a woman into God, call her Mother Nature, let's worship that, call her Mary, not really the Mary of, of Jesus because the Mary of, that was Mother of Jesus would never have accepted worship for a second and yet people are worshiping Mary today. It's called Marianism. And they actually believe that Mary is a co-redemptrix with Jesus. The world's full of deception. Folks, we have to make sure that we come to the place where we understand this is not just an Old Testament message. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. And as we nurse relationships with people that we want to get along with, and yet we know that through yoga classes, they're now involving themselves in Eastern mysticism. I mean, I talked to a lady one time. She was absolutely convinced, absolutely convinced that what the scripture said when it's, Jesus said, you must be born again. Remember when Jesus said that to Nicodemus? She was absolutely convinced that that was referring to reincarnation. You have to be born again. Born again, and again, and again, and again. And after you attain to being a part of the oversoul again, you become a part of the great nothingness. Now you are a part of God. So you take your Christianity. What do you want to do? You want to be uh, a person who, who is into Hinduism or or some kind of Eastern mysticism. And so you take your Christianity and you put some labels on it and you defend it with the Bible. Jesus said you must be born again. And the Spirit of God is grieved to hear such deception in the world, but especially from the mouths of believers. I can look at the Old Testament, our current culture, and I can read about the high priest. And the high priest, he wore this thing that was going to supposedly, he had to have it on, and it was going to help him make decisions. The Urim and the Thummim, he had to have this thing on him, and it had these jewels on it that were a part of it. And if I want to, as a Christian, I can justify using crystals to try to give me a, a direct connection with the God and to get the right chakra to get my energy in a certain way so that I'm enlightened beyond the people around me. Because if he had crystals on his thing, what's the problem with me having my crystals and focusing on them? Do you see how you can take the word of God and distort it and try to force this beautiful relationship that God has created for us as his people to make us his very own and try to create some kind of Eastern mystic belief. Yes, all of those beliefs are going to be very popular. Let me, let me just say this before we go. If you like the idea of global government, stick around. If you like the idea that it doesn't matter who or what you attach your life to, who or what you have sex with, who or what you believe that you are, stick around. If you like the idea that drugs no matter what they are, should be legal and everybody should be able to just do what they want to with them, stick around. If you like the idea of doing anything and everything you can to make yourself happy, stick around. If you like the idea of social justice to the extreme that you would deny the very things that God says in His Word, 
in order that you could, in fact, be entitled to anything and everything that you want, even if you are coveting things that belong to other people to take it from them because you're entitled to it. Stick around. The world is going your direction. And Antichrist will be here soon. And you will be able to join the great delusion and the great apostasy. And you will be able to focus on him and to say, I want to be like that guy. I want to be able to be proud and bragging and self-focused and do whatever I want to do. He's telling me that the God of the Bible is trash and that I should be my own God. I like that song on Weight Watchers. Worship. Get down on your knees. Faithfully. Worship. Stick around. He's coming. But if you hear those things and you understand that the tide is going in that direction, it's time to batten down the hatches. The only way you can tie yourself now, don't get me wrong, Jesus is going to hang on to you if you really belong to him. But you can lose your mind literally as a Christian off into the things of the world and be absolutely worthless to God and his kingdom in this lifetime. And he will convict you and he will correct you and he will discipline you because he loves you and you can struggle through all of that and wonder why God is so mad at you. Doesn't he want me to be happy? This divorce would really make me happy. Doesn't he want me to be happy? Being a part of this group or that group or that thing will certainly make me happy. And there you go. That thing is your idol. And in fact, if there's anything you would hold up as an idol, ultimately, because it makes you happy, reveals the last thing I have to say. As it turns out, you're your own idol. I am my own God. You are your own God. If I will turn away from the things of the one true God, or something that will make me happy. So ultimately, how do I stay affixed? Jesus is going to hang on to me, but I've got my part to play. If I am going to be a person who's going to hang on to this post that God has driven down in the, this world called His Word has been revealed to us by His Son. I know He's going to hang on to me. But if I let my mind wander off with the world, folks, the Scripture tells us we have to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And the renewing of our mind comes from being in, knowing, and living the Word of God. In the power of the Holy Spirit. I can't do it. Jesus, I can't do it. I can't know your word. I can't do all these things. And when I say that, he says, oh, you're catching on, boy. You can't. I never expected that you would. You present yourself for it. As a living sacrifice, you come to me. You be in the word. You trust in me. Put your belief in me. I'm going to change the way you think and live and what matters to you if you'll stay focused on me. Well, you're not going to be real popular, maybe. And i tell you why. When the tide's going out, you're at the beach and all your friends start going this way. What do they yell at you? They say, come over here. Come over here. We got a float. We got a boat. We got a this. We got a that. And here they go. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? I can tell you what's wrong with you in this case. You have your eye on the Son of God. 
You know you're an eternal creature. You know that you're going to stand before God someday. And you have a desire in your heart to love Him and to serve Him now more than you have to have their approval. That's what's wrong with you. On the earth, that's a problem. In heaven, that's a problem. That's perfect. That's wonderful. But what if I struggle? Hey, you were saved by God's graciousness. And if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to cleanse us, cleanse us of our sins, to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. First John 1, 9. Even if I turn it around backwards, it's there. So today, if you're a person who you realize, I've not turned my life over to God. I'm still in charge of me. I don't, I mean, I want to, I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to suffer for sin. I don't, I don't want all that stuff, but I'm just not going to turn my life over to God because I don't even know what that's about. Let alone know if I want it. I'm, I'm just about finding out my own way. Thanks, right? All I can tell you is this. You're missing out on what God made you for. Why you exist. Your purpose. Your meaning. And if you die in that state, having not received Jesus, then having rejected Him, you will have put your place to yourself in a place where people reject you. I mean, call it hell. Satan rejected God. The angels rejected God. That hell was made for them. And now everybody who is going to choose themselves as an idol over God, they reject God. They find themselves in the same place. God doesn't even have to really send them there. They sent themselves there by their choice. But the scripture tells us that as many as receive Him, 